What if you could generate high quality blog posts or copywriting material all on autopilot, fully automatic? Well, that's what we've been able to do with this N810 solution, which is actually connected into platforms like news.api, as well as being able to use Google search through our SERP API to be able to research, generate, and even write really great quality content that you can use. Whether you need SEO optimized blogs, marketing copy, or trends around the latest news automatically for you, well, this is going to do it for you on autopilot to help you scale your business without the headache of trying to do this every single day. And the best part is no coding is required at all. So stick around and we're going to show exactly how to build this from scratch. But let's see a quick demo of how it works. So we'll get it to write a quick post around artificial intelligence. So we'll send this off. What we should see it do is it come through, probably try the Google one first. It may fail if we're out of tokens. It looks like it's gone off and do the news API one first, actually. So that's incredibly quick. As you can see here, pulling back all the information, we're going to go through and check our vector database, see if there's any relevant information we can include from in there. And then on the left hand side in a second, we should be able to actually get a fully written blog post. As we can see here on the left hand side, all updated. If I just increase this all the way, so we can see the evolution and future of artificial intelligence, how it's reshaping our world. We've got an introduction here, we've got an understanding, we've got some industry applications, so healthcare, business, finance, transportation, education. We've got some other parts here around ethical considerations, bias, fairness. Lots and lots of information here. And if you're part of the community, you'll be able to come in. We'll go across the classroom. We'll go to N8N Agent. We'll then come down to this form, which is around AI writing for you with the SERP and use API. You'll be able to download the blueprint here. And then if we come into a new environment, all you need to do is come across. You'll do import from file. You choose the JSON file that we're going to be working with, import, and then it will be all ready to go for you automatically. All you need to do is change some of the API keys and it will be all good to go for you. Again, as you can see here, we're going to be using DeepSeek or OpenRouter to give us lots of different options around how we get through this. So let's go and build it from scratch together. So we'll get rid of these to start off with. We'll keep the templates in the background. This one we've covered quite a few times in the past. So I'll leave that in there. But what we're basically going to be doing is every time a new file is uploaded into Google Drive, we're going to be extracting that, storing it in our Pinecone vector database so we can chat with it in a new example. And that's just going to help us get the format that we're looking for. So how are we going to start it off? Well, if we come in here, we'll do add node, and then we're going to do chat. So we'll do chat trigger. And then all we're going to do is add that in there. So what we're going to be able to do is at the bottom here is do chat, send us some conversations with it, and we'll be able to see exactly what we get back. The next part, we're going to do our AI agent. So if we come into here, we'll do AI agent, and then we're going to be using a tool agent. And because we've connected it to the chat trigger, it'll automatically pull that through. So we'll bring this up to the top here. Now, as mentioned, there's two different ways that we can use it. So we've got the deep seek or the open router. If we come into our environment, what we'll be able to do is just do the open router one quickly. Again, to get access to this, all you need to do is add your API key in here, and it'll be all good to go. If we add that in there, we can rename this to Open Router AI Brain. Now, if you're looking to use DeepSeek, all you need to do is come across to DeepSeek's platform, click on API platform. You'll then be brought into a screen that looks a bit like this. You'll have all your usage in there. You'll be able to see the API keys. All you need to do is come across, create a new API key, copy that, and then what we're going to do, paste it in here. So all we want to do is come in here, chat model, down to DeepSeek. You'll be able to add your API key in here, and then it will be all good to go. You'll see a green note at the top saying that you're all authenticated, all able to use it. So again, we'll just rename this to our DeepSeek AI brain. We'll get rid of that connector, and we're going to just use Open Router for now. And we're going to be using Claude because I quite like the way that they've actually been able to give a really good output, almost a conversational. I think it's much better for a lot of the blog writing that we do. The next part, we're going to come through here and just do the window memory buffer. This is basically going to say that it will remember the last five, or we can change that to 10 messages that have come through. So it's got a bit more context and what it needs to go and do. We'll rename this to chat memory. And now we're going to go through to the next stages. So the first one, we're going to be doing the tool. So the one that we're going to be using is SERP API. So we'll come into here, SERP, and you need to add your API key in here. So what you want to do is come across to SERP API. This is a great platform. It's got around 100 searches that you're able to do for free, as you can see here, per month. It does get pretty expensive pretty quickly, depending on what you're looking to do. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking to have something larger, then you're going to need to be paying, you know, $75, $150. 
but you can get away with a lot pretty cheaply. What you want to do is create an account, log in, and you'll see your API key in here. You'll want to copy that. We want to come back into our environment, paste it in here, and then you'll be able to search the internet through Search API. You can add all these different elements in here if you want to. So for example, we could add English for all of the responses, and then we'll just rename this to Search Google. Brilliant. So now we've got the ability to search Google. We've got all of the memory and the ability for AI to write the actual copyright as well. The next stage, we're going to do call NATM workflow because we're going to be generating a separate one, which is going to trigger the actual retrieval of our platform through news API, all of the content so that we can use it in our actual blog. So we're just going to name this news API. Then we're going to put a quick description in here. There we go. We just added a quick description in there. And now we need to go through and add a workflow. So we want to come across and create a new scenario. And then what we're going to do is when executed by another workflow, we want to accept all of the data coming through because we're going to be using our AI prompt in the master agent to be able to send across the correct data. In here, we'll just paste some fake data so that we can go through and do some testing in a minute. So we'll just change this to search query AI agent. So now if we add our HTTP module afterwards, what we'll be able to see is that the output is going to be this search query that's going to be sent across. So we'll just rename this to search news API. And then what we're going to do is come back into our main workflow and we'll do search news API. So now it's able to automatically trigger that workflow and we'll change this to search news API. There we go. So they're the two main parts we're going to be using and we're all good to go for the rest. So if we come back into our searching news API, what we're going to be doing is using news API, which is a great platform. If I just load it up in a separate screen here around the pricing, you can see that you've got a 24 hour delay that comes through. You're able to do hundred requests per day. So you get a lot of value absolutely for free and you can start to pay for it on a larger basis if you need it. Again, that's where you can jump up to 250,000 requests. So if you're looking at maybe a more market research analyst or you're looking more in the financial space, you know, really analyzing companies or getting an update on maybe what the latest and greatest is in a certain industry, this platform could be really good for you or others like rss.app as well. What we want to do though is come into here. We're gonna to need to log in and then we're looking for the documentation and it will bring us to this screen. What we're going to be doing is using all articles here. So what we want to use is this HTTP request. Again, once you've logged in, it will automatically add your API key to the end here. So you'll be all good to go. All you need to do is copy this, come back into your workflow. We'll come into here and we'll just paste in the URL for now. What we're going to do though, is if I just open this up, you'll see that we have this Q equals Bitcoin. We're going to be changing that to be dynamic, which is our search query instead. So we want to get rid of that. We'll open it as an expression. We'll open it back up. We'll remove where it says Bitcoin, and then we'll put across where we've got query and we'll save that. We don't need to add any authentication because again, we've got our API key at the end here. So you'll be all good to go. If you can't find your API key, all you need to do is come across, click on your account, and it will show you your API key here that you'll be able to use. And if we come back into our environment, that's now all good to go to search the internet. So we can rename this to search news API. We're just going to change the testing format because when I was using it last time, it comes through as one word because what will happen is it will throw an error if it's not all one word. So we'll just update this quickly and we'll just say that it's going to be query instead. So there we go. All good to go. The next stage, we're going to be adding it to our vector database so we can recall it in the future. This is totally optional. You don't have to do this. So you don't have to constantly search the internet can give a bit of context for previous posts maybe you've written about and we'll be able to do that. Next, we're going to do add documents to data store in our pine cone and we need to go through and choose an index. Now, I've already gone and done this. All you need to do is come into pine cone, create an index, give it a name. I can, I chose the small embedding for the one that we've just done. We want to come down, we can choose AWS and we can choose Virginia for where we're going to host the data. And then you do create index again. Pinecone is great. It's basically going to be able to store lots of data in there for us to recall as and when we need it for the agents we're building. So as we can see here, I've got one that's called blog writing agent. So we'll be able to add that in there and then it's just going to add any documents that it finds into the vector database. And when we say documents, it's basically any of the information we're generating from the content that we're going to be extracting here. The embeddings, we're just going to use OpenAI. Again, you can change this 
If you wanted to use DeepSeek, you'd be able to come down here and change the base URL to have the base URL of something like this. So you get rid of chat in there and then it should send it off. You'll need to add your API key in here. So again, if you've got an account, all you would need to do is copy and paste across from the developer platform in DeepSeek. But we're not going to change that. We're going to get rid of all of those information because we're going to be using our OpenAI account in this case. The document, we're going to be using a default data loader. And then within this, we're going to change this to binary because it's automatically going to identify what we're actually sending through. The last part would just add the text splitter around recursive text character splitter. And we're going to be using a chunk size of a thousand. So what it's basically doing is breaking up the information we're providing it into a bit more manageable data sets or, you know, the size of the data. So when we're going through, we get better recall in the future. So we'll just add that in there. We'll do save. And that's going to be it for this one here. What we'll be able to do is come back into our main workflow. And then we just need to add it in here. So we've got news API, search news API is all good to go. And now we're just going to add in our vector database to be able to send the queries. So we'll come down here and then we're looking for vector store question and answer tool. And we're going to do knowledge base. And then we're just going to add in here that we're going to use a pinecone vector store, which is exactly the same as where we're storing the information or retrieving previous blogs we've written. We're going to add in our blog one here and then we'll come back up here and we'll add the model for the actual main part and again lots of different options you can do here we're going to use open router because again then we've got the option of all of these different ais that we can use so it's really good it gives lots of dynamic options and sometimes you find one that are better again using platforms like deep are incredibly cost effective so before we give this a quick test we need to come into our ai agent we need to come down here and do system message and this is going to be the main prompt that the AI agent is going to use. So what we'll do is we we'll open this up and then we're going to come back into our school community and we'll be able to copy across this master prompt and we'll walk through exactly how it works. There we go, we pasted it in there. So what we've said is that we've given it a really clear objective. Again, we're saying it's an advanced AI agent that's really specialized around generating high quality SEO optimized data for blog posts you know, anything that goes through. I've specified that we're looking for around 2000 words because we don't want it to be too long. We've also come through here and said that it's got access to the SERP API, the news API, and we've given it today's date just for reference. So if he's looking through the news or he's trying to identify the latest information, it's got that from memory. We've given it the steps that it needs to go through and do. We've explained that when it's sending the information across, it needs to put it as one word and extract that actual content of what we're looking for. We've then said the data gathering, how it's going to go through and then write it. So again, lots of key detail here for guiding it through how it's going to do it step by step, what the output we want to do. Again, you can fully customize this to what you would want. We've said around an example output here, what good looks like. And then we've added a few bits at the end here, just to remind it that it can go through and do some customization. What we'll also need to go through and do is just come back into our search environment. And then we'll come in here and we'll just add an aggregator to make sure that we're going to get all of the information back. So what we're going to be looking for is adding all of the information output from our data on the left hand side here, and then we're going to be sending it across. So we'll just change this to AI. The only other thing we're going to need to do is come across to here. We're going to need to change this to JSON. And then if we give it a quick test, it should go off and search the internet. There we go. We can see all of the data being loaded. Again, you can put some limitation on how much you want it to be loaded. We'll just wait for this to go through and complete so it's uploaded all of that data into our vector database for when we want to go through and recall it in some of the conversations and we've also added this aggregator at the end so that we'll be able to pass that back for our conversations and the blog or copywriting we're going to be generating so let's wait for this to finish there we go so it's retrieved all of the data we're just going to save and pause this just because we want to make sure that we can get through and do a quick demo. So what I'm also going to do just for time, and again, this is totally optional if you want to add it to the database here, is we're just going to capture all of this and then we're going to pull it down. And instead, we're going to link it directly straight from the API across to the aggregation function. So this is going to send it straight back. So if we get rid of this pin data, we'll be able to give the main AI agent a quick test. So we'll just unpin. There we go, we should be all good to go. We'll do save, aggregate, we'll make sure that we're capturing all the information. So then if we give this a quick test, what we should see is it aggregates all of that data, so we'll be able to send it across. So now we've unpinned all that data. If we come back into our main agent, we should be able to actually trigger this, retrieve the information. I'm not sure if the search API one will work just because I've used it quite a lot recently. 
so it may be out of tokens. I'll include some quick B-roll in the background here, just showing how we're able to search and scrape data using that SERP API that we've done in other videos, so make sure to check them out on the channel. So we'll get it to write a quick post around artificial intelligence, so we'll send this off. What we should see it do is it come through, probably try the Google one first. It may fail if we're out of tokens. It looks like it's gone off and do the news API one first, actually. So that's incredibly quick. As you can see here, pulling back all the information, we're going to go through and check our vector database, see if there's any relevant information we can include from in there. And then on the left hand side in a second, we should be able to actually get a fully written blog post. It looks like it's trying to access the Google, which it won't be able to because it looks like we're out of tokens. If we come down to here, do search google yeah it looks like we're out of tokens here so it looks like it stopped trying to go through and do it and now it's going to go and actually try and write the blog for us so as we can see here incredibly quick for how it's going to be able to write that blog from scratch using real life data that we've either given it through our vector database or it's gone off and found through latest searches on the internet and then we should get the blog post written for us any second now so if we wait for that to come through as we can see here on the left hand side all updated the search tool isn't returning results. So again, it's noted we've not been able to get the results there. If I just increase this all the way, so we can see the evolution and future of artificial intelligence, how it's reshaping our world. We've got an introduction here. We've got an understanding. We've got some industry applications, so healthcare, business, finance, transportation, education. We've got some other parts here around ethical considerations, bias, fairness, lots and lots of information here. So you can imagine if you're doing this for your own copywriting, your own blog that you were doing, you can provide it some examples, you can tell it exactly what you want, you can update the prompt in here, so if you give it a few examples at the end, exactly how you want it to be replicated, we'll include an example in the community if you want to get access to that. So as we can see there, an incredibly quick and simple and easy way to automatically generate blog posts for you using real life data that it scraped from the internet, from the news sites, so that you can focus on refining it versus trying to come up with that idea from scratch. I hope this was useful. All of the resources in the link below. Stay tuned for more around AI agents and have a great day.